All right. Uh, welcome back to another episode of RimWorld. But um, instead of uh, me playing like the game today or like continuing our series, I'm going to do a little uh, tutorial about like how you get started in this game because it's a little daunting for new people to play this game. Although it's rather simple to figure out once you get the hang of it. Anyway, um, let's just jump right into it. So you can obviously just do the tutorial and you'd learn a few things, but it's it's dumb anyway let's, let's you gotta click on uh, new colony first you got some options here but you're gonna want to leave it on crash landed that's like the most basic one put it next and then you got the three ai's here so these all do different things okay so uh cassandra here she's like the most basic ai person like she does like challenges against like basically the ai in this game is like they're the challenge and the tension it's like the amount of times that like raiders will raid your base or uh, stampeding animals will invade your base, base and like try to kill everyone. Yeah, that's the kind of stuff that happens there. And Cassandra will do it like in a normal uh, pace. And then you got um Phoebe here, who will uh, basically it's more calm with her. Like it, things happen rarely with her, but it allows you to build your colony and relax. And then Randy here is <laughs> he's just chaos basically. Um. It's really hard to play with him, but it's also a lot of fun because a lot of stupid shit can happen. But we're just going to leave it on Cassandra because it's the basic one. And you're going to want to leave it on um, some challenge. Because it's for the most basic game and for the people who want to start off. And you also want to put on um, permadeath mode. Okay, so permadeath mode means like it's just the way the game is supposed to be played. Like you can't like save your game separately and then if you fuck up, you can like come back. No, you're going to have to you're gonna have to actually live with your mistakes and that's the way it should be played so i'm gonna say you should turn that on all right anyway we're gonna to go to next here okay so then you get to the create the world thing you're gonna get a seed it's kind of like minecraft if you ever played that you just type in a seed so we'll type in uh i don't know tutorial i guess i i guess i'll leave this as 30 percent global global coverage i think this is like the amount of thing generated yeah yep okay so the globe coverage is basically how much of the terrain is actually generated on your world. So, like, right now it's set to 30%, which means it's only going to generate 30% of, like, the, the surface area on my planet. And the rest is just going to remain a mystery until I actually want to go and generate it. But, yeah, we're going to leave it at at 30%. And then overall temperature and rainfall is going to stay the same. So go ahead and click Generate. Now, this is the landing site selection screen, okay? And this is also where you can see the 30% of your world that's been generated, okay? So everything is, like, set into these, like, hexagons. And basically the world is built out of these hexagons. And, like, there's biomes and everything that are all different. Every time you click on something, you can see, like, like for example, I'll click on uh, this little square here. So this is a boreal forest, okay? And it gives you, like, all these things over here, like the terrain, the current movement time, and winter and average like the, the temperatures and everything like rainfall so what you're going to want to be doing for your first game is you want to find something that's got an average temperature that's actually not cold like that so you want to probably go down south i'm assuming yeah like right here like this is tropical rainforest the average temperature is 66 degrees okay so that's not bad okay but the growing period is not all year so you want to find something that has a growing period for all year because that means you can farm year year round and when you can farm year-round, that helps a lot with trying to sustain your colony's food. Oh, here we go. Year-round. All right. So once you find a place that has year-round growing and an average temperature of like 60 degrees and above, then you're you're pretty good. This has a lot of rainfall right here. You're going to probably find these places like near the southern end of your planet. You're going to want to go to like the mid-area toward the south area. That's where you're going to find the year-round growing and the good temperatures. You another thing you should look for is hills because you want some hills nearby, either large or small. It doesn't really matter. I prefer large because then you can just build into the mountains. But yeah, so once you find your site, you want to click uh, next. It's gonna bring you to this screen. Okay, you don't have to worry about the left behind for now. It's gonna be for something else that you, doesn't really matter. Okay, anyway, the the ones that matter though are these three people right here. These three are your starting characters, okay? So what you can do is you can randomize them. You get a bunch of random shit. Okay, you can name them, if whatever you want. The one that the name that's going to show up is the middle name right here. It's like their nickname. So, like, you can leave these two names be if you want to. If you just want to 
have a name displayed like your friend's name or something that's what i do like i, I just take the nickname and i change it and then that's what their name will be anyway that's what that is so what what you want to do for a good starting crew is you want to look at these team skills down here and you want to try and get someone that's good at cooking good at medicine good at growing and you want some intellectual or mining so the main ones are medicine and cooking though and growing these three right here are your definitely main priorities in my opinion for example i don't see anything on this person that's useful okay so we got a cook here which is not a very good colonist to be all right so this this is much better so he's incapable of violent but he is really good at medicine okay and he's also pretty good at social and these flames right here represent like their interest in the thing so it, it increases their uh ability to gain experience from that that's what the flame means but it, it appears that like this guy is not exactly the greatest either this guy is good he may not have much in cooking but he's got a lot of passion for it and then he's got the medicine so that's what you should be shooting for okay you want to get someone that's going to be good in like these two things and then also have a good shooting and melee abilities to, to protect themselves. And you want to make sure that they're not incapable of, like, anything. If they're incapable of something, that means they're not going to actually do it. So, like, if they're incapable of violence, they're not going to protect themselves. It's, yeah, it's, you don't want to screw yourself over like that. Anyway, so you want to go through and try to get, like, enough people to be good at all these different things. So you want to make sure you find someone that's good at medicine. Find someone that's good at cooking. Find someone that's good at growing. Find, make sure you got someone that's decent at mining. You don't want to worry. You don't have to worry about intellectual stuff, but yeah, go through and find all that stuff. Okay, so now that you've done all that, you can click into the game, and you'll come across this screen where it's gonna tell you like a little story about what happened. Basically, your starship got shredded, and you guys crash landed onto a planet. So you're gonna land on this planet. Okay, make sure you hit the space bar to pause the game, because this is the irritating part of, at the very beginning I, I hate this part but anyway what you want to do is you want to go around the map okay you're going to see these little uh steel things or like there's things with little x's on them that means they're forbidden to use so the fastest way to do this is well having a mod that lets you just select it all and unforbid it all or you can just do that i guess you can just um drag across the screen like this and it'll select all the things that are like this so what you can do is you can go down to the bottom over here drag the entire map like this and then once you got everything selected you press f or you click this button and it'll unforbid it which means your people will be able to go and take it and do whatever the hell they want with it okay so you want to do that then what you want to do is go to architect here this is where you go to do all your building and shit and you can go to zone like the stockpile button and then look for a location that it'd be good for a base like a good place to build a base so of a good location would be to like have something that funnels in kind of so like the people like the enemies or raiders that come to try to attack you they have to get funneled into an area but it appears that i do not have much of a location for that um yeah so i'm just going to choose this location and right here this this works fine this, this will work fine so what you want to do is you want to build your stockpile there so that everyone moves it over there or like moves the crap and junk over there um once once you got that placed put down a few growing zones nearby your base you just want to make sure they're decently sized they don't have to be huge don't make them huge because otherwise your people will get overloaded with work but you want to go here all right the default plant to grow is the potato plant so they're gonna let them grow the potatoes and then what you want to do is if you have a good enough grower which i'm not sure if i do i didn't really look but you want to try to make heal root, which I do not have a good enough grower. But heal root is basically medicine. Okay, you want to try to do that. But if you can't do that, then you want to do cotton so you can make like clothing and stuff. And then you also want to make another growing area if you can. And put down like, I don't know, one of these ones like strawberry plants if you have the grower for it. Or like, uh, even like, I don't know, rice plants or something. Just something else. Just give your colonists some other food then what you want to do is order some hunting so you go to your orders here under Ar architect go to orders go to hunting what you can do is you can click and drag and now you have marked all of these things for hunting if you find an animal do not mark something for hunting that is really big okay if you find a really big animal 
Okay, like a mega sloth or something. Do not mark that up for hunting because your people will get annihilated. Just just warning you. <laughs> do not do that. I'm trying to find an example of one on here, but I do not see an example. But yeah, do not do that. That's a horrible idea. You will die. Okay. Then what you want to do is go over by your base. Click on the old chop wood function here. Click and drag. Chop some wood there. Just like that. Um, then after you do all that, I believe... What you want to do now is just let it run. So you let it run, go down here at the bottom right, you can click like this three speed right here, which is why I usually do to play the game, because you play it at normal speed, it's really slow. Okay. Um your pop-ups over here are going to tell you what your people need or like give you little warnings or something. So like my hunter doesn't have a ranged weapon. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna go down here and it it appears the stuff out of the escape pods needs to get unforbidden. I need to do that. But we're going to equip that rifle there. He's our hunter. And then you can go to the character screen here. If you click on an individual character, you can click on their character. You can see like their skills and shit. So you want, this guy's good at melee. You're going to get the plasteel. And this guy's got good shooting, so he's going to get the other revolver. Then, there we go. I forbid all that. And then they're going to go and pick up their items. Okay, so yeah, now the people are doing their stuff. You got the hunters hunting and everything. Now, once they get done with the hunting, all right, you're going to have a bunch of dead corpses like this. Okay, see how the board's dead right there? All right, so they can't just, well, they could just eat the carcass, but that makes them really unhappy. So what you want to do is you want to go to architect, go to production, click the butcher table. You go to the butcher table, you can place it anywhere you want, anywhere you want doesn't really matter you just gotta have a butcher table so they can like skin it and shit so they can get the meat out of it uh also do not touch panthers they are scary right, anyway yeah once that happens then you click on this all right so this is important um any production thing that you build like from this menu here needs to be clicked on and you have to click bills i don't know why it's called bills but it's called bills so you click bills click add bill and this is how you do the production and stuff like that you can make kibble which basically it's 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 food for animals okay um you can do that or the most important thing is butcher creature so what you want to do is you click butcher creature click this little bell button here and click do forever okay so that means that any creature that gets killed out here now will get dragged over here gutted and then the the meat will get put into the fridge or whatever you have your stockpile set as so see now that this is an example yep see now you got the meat down here pork there's gonna be lots of meat actually there's gonna be a butt ton of meat and i since i don't have a refrigerator it's all gonna get spoiled which as you can see here it tells you it's gonna spoil but yeah that's how that production thing works so now what you want to do Let's go to mining if you have hills. This is if you have hills. You would dig into the mountain, preferably a 2x2 two two space, or a, yeah, 2x2 two two space for a hallway. You want to dig into the mountain like that, and then just build a few little rooms like this. Preferably rather spacious, because they like spacious rooms. So build like a few of these suckers like that. Then that'd be too many. You just got to make sure you get something built inside. And then if you do not have a uh, mountain or something to dig into, then what you want to do is you want to go to structure here. And you got these walls and these doors, okay? You can choose the material of the wall by just clicking on it, and it'll just give you the stuff. You likely want to choose wooden, okay? And then what you would do is you'd go over, like, here, for example. Click and drag. You can build a wall like this. Oh, like this, okay? And then what you want to do is you want to build a door. Okay, so now you got your enclosed space here. Once they get it built, it'll be enclosed. Okay, but the one main thing is, is you want to build a roof. So you want to go to the build a roof area, and you want to do this. Usually they do it automatically, but in our case, we're just going to make sure that they're building the roof. Because then this will be enclosed. And then what you can do is you can go to floors and then make a wooden floor. Make it nice and neat in there if see there he goes he's putting the roof on right now uh we still have a thing for need colonist beds so the way to get around that cheaply 
is you go to furniture and you click on sleeping spot. And what you can do is you can just place like three of them someplace and then they'll have a bed. That notification will go away. Problem is, is these sleeping spots are very uncomfortable and people do not like them. So you're going to want to eventually upgrade to a bed. And you're going to also want to make sure everyone has their own room. If everyone has their own room, then everything will... They'll, they'll be really happy. Let's just put it that way. Um, you got to be careful of mental breakdowns from people being unhappy too. So while this is all going on, I'll try to explain this. So if you go to someone's needs, you can look at like their mood. And then you got all the things that are making them unhappy or happy. Okay, so like he slept in the cold and on the ground and outside. Yeah, see, if they had their own room, then these three ones, these three things right here would be gone. If he had a dining area, the eight without a table would be gone. Uh, uncomfortable, probably want something to sit on. Yeah, if you hover over it, it tells you exactly what it is. So in a little pain, you can't really help that one unless you get him drugs, probably. But he's got a uh, white scar on his neck, which is what he's getting pain from. But anyway, yeah, you got to make sure you keep people happy. If you don't keep people happy, your first colony is going to literally implode on itself and people will go psychotic and start killing each other. And you don't want that to happen. Trust me, you don't want that to happen. Uh, it's just awful. You don't want that to happen at all. <laughs> That's what happened to my first colony. They all started turning on each other and killing each other. Actually, one strangled the other person. <laughs> it was It was interesting. The next thing that you're going to want to do after a you know, little house here built is you're going to want to make sure you have a fridge. If you don't have a fridge, you're fucked. You need to have a fridge because your food needs to survive somehow. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to build like a little, find a little enclosed space like this or make it yourself. It doesn't really matter. Once you find that, you can do a stockpile here. Drag over the area that you want your stockpile to be. Click on your stockpile. Click storage. Clear all. Set the priority to critical and then click the foods tab just the foods tab that's it and then if you want this is optional you can go to the corpses you can go to animal corpses and turn that on too so then they'll put any animals that you kill that haven't been butchered yet into the freezer so they don't rot that's always nice to do so you can go to structure make sure you build a door there and then the most important thing of a freezer is you need a cooler so make sure you build that uh, which right now I don't have enough components, which is a little embarrassing. I'm going to have to work on that. We have to see people are moving everything in here. Hopefully it's nice and cool in there. It is not nice and cool in there. I also want to make sure it's roofed. It'd be a really sh big shame if uh, it wasn't roofed. Okay, so now we're going to jump to the, the medical part quick. So right now I don't have a medical area, but... I can always make one. So all you do is place it in a sleeping spot, or if you had a bed, you can place it on a bed too. But you click on your sleeping spot, and then you'll see you got a tab for, for prisoners, and you got a tab for medical. Okay. Um, I'm going to pause my game. So if you set the medical, it's going to turn blue like this. Include A bed will also turn blue. The sheets on it will turn blue. So it basically means it's used for medical. Okay, it means that anyone who's hurt will go straight to that bed, and they'll sit there until someone tends them. Okay. Then if you had to set the prisoner, for example, apparently I can't say that. Oh, yeah, it has to be enclosed outside, but um, here, one second, let me get rid of that. What if I uh, put it in here? If you want to do a prisoner one, you put it inside, you go to here and you click for prisoner, which, okay, apparently this isn't enclosed because of these, but if it was, it would turn orange, okay, and when it would turn orange, then when someone attacks you, and you like shoot them down or whatever, you shoot down one of them and they're downed and they're not dead yet, you can go out there, capture them, and bring them back to your prisoner or like bed. And then what you can do is you can sit there and beg them to join your colony, basically. And it might take a long time, it might take two seconds, it depends on how good they are at negotiating and how good your colonist is at negotiating, and yeah. But that's how the prisoners and medical stuff works. So now I'm going to quickly... Uh, fuck. Go to this stockpile right here, just like that. All right. Now I'm going to place my cooler here. Okay, so for the cooler, to make sure that works, you can build a solar panel, which is what I'm going to do. And then I'm also going to build a battery, which is going to be right here. Build a cut power cable over to here. Like that. Alright. 
You don't have to worry about the need defenses thing right away, though you should, but you don't need to. Because you got, you got a little bit to deal with, and all of our stuff is running away because we don't have a proper fridge yet, which is fine. It's not that big of a deal right now. Okay, down to meal source. So, what you can do is for a meal source, you can either go to a temperature, get a campfire, campfires work, or you can get a stove, which, okay, well, the, you can get a stove, which would be over here, but I, this thing popped up and intruded on it. So anyway, you can name your faction and give your town a name if you want, but I'm just going to leave it as is. Um, so you want to, for the stove thing you want to go to production you can go to either electric or fueled fueled uses wood electric uses electric so what i'm going to do is i'm going to use electric is well yeah because why not electric is much better you should probably use that as well um unless you for some reason can't use electric then use the fueled one which is going to use wood um i'm gonna wait for this to get built uh, never mind. Okay, so I'm going to give you guys a little help on how to deal with these mad animal things. Depending on the animal, sometimes they're really small, meaningless. Sometimes they're really big and scary. Um, really big and scary ones, you're going to want to try to avoid them if they're angry. But these monkey ones, okay, or like squirrels or something, if they're really small, you can probably just kill them. Uh, and they attack them to death. Uh, so what I just did there was I pressed R. You click on a colonist and press R, it drafts them into the military or drafts them to like fight. And what you can do is you can order them around, you can right click on where you want them to go. Uh, you can do this to multiple people at a time, so you can I can do this and send them up your melee attack the monkey, for example. So like, yep, now they're fighting. They're gonna beat each other here. You can look at the combat information if you click on them and click combat. See that got all these things. Oh, the monkey died. Ramka shoved the monkey in the right leg while wearing an animal look. That's kind of funny. But yeah, so that happened. So what you can do is, once the thing's dead, you can unforbid the animal and you can gut it if you want. Which, if you have it set to forever, then it's going to get gutted and skinned and shit. Um, so Ramka. Right now he's laying in his bed and no one's treating him. So if no one's treating someone for a reason... Oh, never mind, he's getting treated. But anyway, if no one was treating him, you could right-click on him, and there'd be a thing called Prioritize Tending Ramka or whatever, wherever your colonist's name is. You want to click on that, and then the person that you clicked on will go get medical supplies, go over here, and fix them up for you. Um, that's how you do that. Uh, we got a cooler built, which there's no power yet, but if this is all built, there would be. But if there, if there was power, what you can do is you click on your cooler, and this is how you make a freezer. So you'd go to this lower target temperature thing, and you click that until you get to, like... I don't know, zero degrees, so something under under 32 degrees, preferably lower than 32 degrees, because people are going to be going in and out of your freezer all the time, and you want to make sure that your food stays frozen, because the temperature will dynamically change from inside to outside, and you want to make sure that it's nice and cold. Um, yeah, we're going to try to wait until we get one of these rooms dug out. So... Um, what we can do here is I can show you guys how to make a room now. So what you can do is you go here, find a bed, click place the bed. Okay, uh, we'll do another one here, I guess, another one here. So now what you want to do is since you have the three beds in there, you're going to want to, people don't like living in a barracks. So you're going to want to separate their, their, uh, rooms like this, something like this, just like that. Okay, and then you're going to want to make sure that they can get into their rooms. It, that it, they can walk through each other's rooms. They don't really care about that. Um, I'm going to build this right here. So what you want to do is you want to make sure you decorate the room nicely. They like dressers, so place a dresser in each room. It'll make them happy. Um, a lot of times what I do is I place this little 1 by 2 table. Because they like to have some place to sit at. Um, I did that. You can place their dining chair because they like to eat in their own room sometimes. Not all the time, but sometimes. And then I also place a potted plant in here all the time. Every single time I put a potted plant in here because people like plants. Okay, they like them. And if we had cloth, maybe an armchair too, but 
this is basic for now and this is good enough that'll keep people happy then um you also want to make sure when you do build the rooms that you go out and you get rid of your uh sleeping spots so they don't use those forever so they actually go when they find the new beds and you're gonna notice that people are gonna be a lot happier when they have these beds now as long as it's not outdoors and it's indoors like this room right here is outdoors uh, so he's not gonna exactly be the happiest if he slept outside and he's still upset about the night before otherwise these people are a little are actually quite happy quite happy right now as you can see they're definitely not upset and that's because well partially because they actually have their own room now and then if we had like for example i have a labrador but if you have another animal you can build an animal bed or an animal sleeping box or a sleeping spot like if you want to designate where people or like their animals sleep you can place these spots down or you can put down these animal beds preferably if you get cloth through the animal beds which if you planted cotton you'll have cloth in no time yeah okay anyway back to the cooking thing now since we're jumping all over the place so you uh, I'm trying to adapt to the speed of everything here, but anyway, you want to click on bills for this thing click add bill now These are the different types of meals the one I've always stuck with is a simple meal the fine meals and lavish meals are Advanced stuff that you don't need to worry about for now So what I want to do is do that click the yellow button here. It says do X times Go to do until you have X and then what you want to do is raise this to like I don't know 20 and then your cook will go and make 20 meals basically or until it's ready also, since this is also quite important for a later game, um, what you want to do is you want to click work. You open up this whole menu here. It's going to show you all the things that people are good at and what they're doing or what they're assigned to. So you can leave it in this checkmark mode if you want, but I much, much prefer going to this priority number things. So you can set it to what people do first, and I got a raid to deal with. Um, Alright, so if you want to deal with raids efficiently, what you want to do is set up some sort of like trap ambush thing. I'm going to wait for him to get closer. Okay, so a lot of ambushes wait until they're ready, but I'm just going to get people ready. I'm going to set you the melee guy here, the rifle guy out there. Usually you would have cover for these guys to sit at, but this is just a guy with a pistol, so we'll be fine. So he's going to come around here. He's going to try to find the shortest path or the longest path, I guess. I guess I say my own words right there. Okay, so he is not doing what I thought he would. So anyway, what you want to do is you want to make sure you attack him. Uh, get up here, here. That fucker started a fire. You're a douchebag, man. Come on, get in there. Okay, so... Get everyone lined over here. This guy's beating the shit out of Randy. Or Randall. Come on. Alright, no, he's down. Alright, so, uh... Yeah, you guys gotta put out that fire. All right, so now, as you can see, if if you see these little exclamation point things right here coming off of them and they're moving around on the ground, that means that they're actually not dead. They're just knocked out or downed, okay? In this in this case, it's downed. Um, so what you can do, you can click on your colonist, right-click on the downed guy, and you can click capture. Capturing them will take them to the nearest prison bed, which in our case we don't have one, but we can have one. So we're going to set this one to be prisoner. See how it turned orange and everything in the room turned orange? That means it's a prisoner room. So what you can do is now, right click on it, click capture. You'll take them, put them onto there, and then he'll treat them a little bit. You can change the prisoner treatment a little bit if you want, but yeah. When you have a, when you have a prisoner, the most important thing is to set it to chat and recruit. That means that it'll, they'll try to recruit him into your colony. And if he accepts, then he's in your colony. And you're good to go. But it's going to take a while for that to happen. Uh, anyway, yeah, that's pretty much all you really need to know, actually. Because that's like all the basics. Uh, everything else is pretty self-explanatory. Uh, 
something you're going to want to do is build a research bench, which once you do that, then you get to this screen. And then you can just choose what the research, which is the standard research tree that is used in pretty much every video game. Um, yeah, it doesn't really, like, there's, these things are all uh, useful for different situations, that depending on what you're in. But um, if you want my input on this, I would always go for pemmican, smithing, and then maybe brewing, because you want beer. Okay. Uh, anything else that I should talk about? Not really. Yeah, there's nothing else. Alright, yeah, that's that's how you get started on RimWorld. Just try to keep everyone happy. Keep an eye on these things down here. Like, I have low food. Keep an eye on that. Make sure your colonists are always busy. And, uh, yeah, I'll see you in the next RimWorld episode, I guess. Bye-bye.